the, the issue, I think, one of the issues, I think, is that there's really not a lot of precedent in USC broadcasting to base it on. Uh, if you look at boxing, even in the, today's game of boxing, you know, what you hear, you can really, you, you can really associate with what you heard when you were younger. Because boxing's been around forever, uh, either on radio back in the day or in the early days of television because it was so easy to produce. Uh, so you had a precedent, you had a, you had a benchmark that you could compare what you were hearing uh, today's boxing to, uh, and to some of the great uh, fight announcers back in the day. Uh, so these guys are kind of working without a map. You know, they're, 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 the, they're the, this group of broadcasters in MMA are going to be the, uh, the, the, the benchmarks as time goes on. And other broadcasters that come into the, into the genre are always going to be compared to this group of guys, the guys that you see on, on cable now or, on, or here on, or on pay-per-view. Uh, they're going to be the guys. So I, the, the disadvantage that they have is that they don't have a lot of people to uh, go back and listen to somebody else's work you know, I had that in in uh, in in, in, in uh, pro wrestling. You know, there, were, gosh, all kinds of illustrations, and I certainly had it in football. Uh, it just happened that I broadcast football like I broadcast wrestling in the fact that I was only being myself. So I would say the only thing for those guys is just to continue being themselves in their natural personality. But I think that for the brands to grow. They, they can't grow only with the hardcore fans. I find it uh, arguable that the hardcore fans uh, would leave the, the MMA world that they love so much and that they have uh, passionately supported uh, because a, a show was called uh, not to their liking. I think you'd have to have a lot of bad nights for, to run your hardcores away. I right. think they're in. I think they're in. I think they got deep roots. I think they've they've homesteaded. They're here. They're staying, and uh, they can't get enough of the product. So, with that said, for companies to build their brands, you've got to attract a casual fan. You've got to attract. You know, I've had. I remember one uh, one time uh, here at our home. We had uh, one of the football coaches at Oklahoma University at the time was here watching fights with me. I think it might have been one of the early Lesnar fights. And, uh, you know, he knew that I had a relationship with Brock and uh, was involved in, in uh, the recruitment of him out of Minnesota, University of Minnesota. And, and he brought a couple of his, his kids over. Uh, and we watched the, the fight on pay-per-view. And, and I was, you know, basically, it was, I was taping it, so I was, I was kind of dvr in it. I was having to stop and explain things to him because he didn't. And he's a very bright guy. He's now the head coach of the University of Indiana. A very bright guy. Uh, and I, I was stopping and explaining things. He didn't know what BJJ was. What's that? You know, you get somebody to close up the BJ, and you know, give you a lot of things. Right, right. I said, well, that's, well, it's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead. I'll click. You know. Hit the DVR button, and it will continue to fight. We roll on, and so that told me that he's the kind of guy with his with his sons that if they emotionally invested into this product, and they got they understood some of the terms, and they understood some of the technology, the uh, terminology and concepts. Uh, being a sports guy, you know, uh, he would these two young kids might become fans. And the dad might become a fan. And they have a household that could afford to buy a pay-per-view. But here I am, a novice, to be honest with you. I'm a novice today. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an inter- interested fan, point blank. Certainly not an expert. And my opinions are only those of my own on a personal level. But it's guys like that. And that's what got me thinking. Well, you know, maybe if the announcers... Would, would back away from sticking more to the hardcore fans, not and certainly not disregard them, 
I'm not saying that at all. You cannot do that. But bring it, bring the needle back into the middle a little bit, where you dip back into that casual fan thing. And and you know, for those of you that may not be familiar, blah blah, you know, fill in the blank. So I, I that that's what kind of rung the bell for me, and I think that's kind of the situation now is that you know these guys do a heck of a job. They 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 travel a lot. They're doing a lot more product than they ever did. But you know they don't have those those forefathers to go back and tap into and how they call it and how would so and so have uh, described this situation uh, and and so I think that you know they're they're kind of like I said they don't have a GPS out there. You know they are the GPS. They are the, they're writing the map. They're Lewis and Clark and they're exploring and they're and they're finding their way. And I, you know I've never I've heard fights that uh, I've you know that. You know, I would, I might have personally uh, done something a little differently, but that means nothing. Hey, I, I could say the same thing about I got the NFL package on Direct TV, and you think I'm I'm critical of, you know, I'm a whole lot more critical on football broadcasting than I am MMA broadcasting because I have more knowledge of football than I do MMA. I want to learn more about MMA. I want to learn more about the techniques, the heritage, the history. Uh, and why it's uh, such a unique sport, and, and and who's going to teach that to me? Who's going to be my tutor? And so, because of the nature of the beast, it has to be the the broadcasters, uh, by and large. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because one of the things that hardcore fans of MMA for years. Uh, prior to the explosion of the UFC on cable in 2005, maybe even from day one, if you really want to go back to 1993, in terms of the UFC, have been tracking, is at which point does this become mainstreamed as a sport? And I think what you're touching on there, Jim, relative to educating the audience through announcing, is, is kind of wrapped up in that question of when MMA crosses that line into part of the sports culture, and, and, and when they can sort of take the cue that, yes... It is now okay to call. It is now okay to assume that the audience is familiar enough with this sport that we don't need to constantly take three or four steps back to explain and contextualize things for folks. We've been around long enough. We've established ourselves enough. Uh, you know, for, exa- for example, you watch an NHL game, and you know the, the, the announcers are sometimes incomprehensible if you don't know anything about the sport. Um, and, and that's uh, you know a multi-million dollar enterprise, and to say nothing of the NFL. You mentioned the NFL, which is you know the biggest sport in, in America. Um, and if you don't know anything about football, in fact, if you don't know quite a lot about football, a lot of what the announcers talk about is is incomprehensible um, to, to someone who's coming at the sport from a casual perspective. So, when, if ever, considering your knowledge of you know pro sports announcing as well as pro wrestling announcing, does does mixed martial arts get into the space? Where there, there's a comfort level there, and you don't have to worry about explaining things to people anymore. Well, you know, I, I tell you, Jack, I don't know that there ever is a total comfort level because you're always going to be engaging more people to jump on the wagon and come along for the ride to invest in a product as a fan. Uh, you know, whether you're buying tickets to live events or you're buying pay per views or you're going on websites. And reading and having having that knowledge become a part of your your daily routine or certainly your weekly routine. Uh, I don't know that you ever get to that point. I know that when I uh, have broadcast uh, wrestling, uh, even you know 2008 uh, WrestleMania this year, I certainly have. It's my obligation to not broadcast strictly to people that I perceive know all the storylines and all the background and, and what this guy is doing and what this hole does and the, the strategy behind this game plan. Uh, I, I never took any of that for granted. I don't think that you ever get to a point. It's like, you know, hey, I, I hear things on NFL broadcasts, and I can kind of consider myself a football guy. Uh, that I will, one of the things I love uh, with my friend, that uh, Kevin Wilson, is, who's the coach at Indiana, we were neighbors here in Norman, Oklahoma, where I live, and, and he was the offensive coordinator at OU last year and gets his head job. And I would hear things on football and on Sundays and uh, that uh, an analyst would use insider talk, 
Now, the basic, uh, the, one of the basic uh, ones would be that people might relate to is, well, it's uh, the Rams are running a cover two defensively, thinking that all of us in the room that are watching the Rams game should know what a cover two defense is. Well, you know, Monty Kiffin invented the cover two. He was the coach at, uh, with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Well, you know, if you peel the onion back, you find out that Monty Kiffin was also the defensive coordinator at Nebraska with Tom Osborne. That's where the cover two was born. But if you don't know what the cover two is, then you miss part of the, the how the chess pieces are being moved around on the field and why, and why a cover two is strong, what its strengths are, and, what is, and where can you attack the cover two. So I've heard different terms on football that it was a disconnect for me. As a football fanatic, well, you know, I had the luxury of picking my cell phone up and calling my buddy who was over watching film and saying, hey, Will, uh, what the hell is uh, such and such? Mm-hmm. And I'd, I'd get the Reader's Digest version of what it meant. Okay, how you doing? I'm good. Uh, how's so-and-so looking? Oh, they're going to be tough. You know, same thing coaches always tell you. We'll be all right, you know, whatever. Well, then I'd go back and watch a game. Well, we don't have that luxury in MMA. And I don't, so I don't know that you ever get to that point. You've always got to broadcast to the masses. And the masses, you hope, include some uneducated uh, individuals. If the marketing department, the promotions people, the network, uh, the, the, the management of an, of an entity are doing their job, they're always going to be attracting new fans. So you have to assume that those new fans don't, don't, do not know the story. So I personally uh, am of the philosophy, and again, it's one guy's opinion, that you never get to the comfort level that, okay, now we can just rip, we can rip and roar and go hardcore all the way. Everybody knows what we're, what, what we're doing. Everybody knows what a Kimura is. You know, my wife thinks a Kimura is like some kind of drink with an umbrella in it. 